So we've been doing a lot of reviewing of Microsoft bookings and looking at what you can do out of the box. So we've set up our staff, our services, uh, we've created the booking page and we've looked at the experience that the customers and the staff have with Microsoft bookings. Now what I'd like to do is start going through some um, more sort of out of the box things. So how can we do stuff using things like Power Automate? How can we really dig in and understand what's happening when someone goes ahead and books something on our Microsoft Bookings page? So that's, that's great. What I want to be able to do is get some kind of email summary each morning that says here are all of the bookings for today and I want that to be emailed in a nice little table. So let's go ahead first of all and have a look and see what happens when a booking is actually being made and see what Outlook is actually um, bringing in, what's what's actually captured. So if I go to um, my, my calendar, so I'm logged in as an actual user, I'm seeing any of those bookings that I am the staff member for. So that's that's what I'm seeing right now. What I can do is I can click and add a calendar and I can add a calendar from directory. So if I go ahead and do a search, so there's the bookings calendar. So if I go ahead and select that and I can choose where to add it to and I'm gonna add it to people's calendar area and click on add. All right, so we've done that. And so now what we can see is we can actually see all of the Microsoft bookings appointments. So let's go ahead and turn off my calendar. And that's then all we're seeing was just seeing the bookings ones. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and we will click on one of these and we will edit it so that we can see what actually happens. All right. So actually, let me pick a one that isn't under my name so we can see. Let's go with this one. All right, so what we can see here is that the booking that was made, the first thing that happens is the booking service. So if I go just go back to bookings, I have two services. I've got initial free consultation and premium consulta consultation. Um, so the first thing is that the service name is what's used as the subject. The staff member that's booked, we can see there that they are required. That is going to go onto their calendar. But what we also get is a category that is added for each person and their name is used as the category. Now, if I look at the list of categories now, we can see there's all of the different people. And that's because it's been created by Microsoft Bookings. Then we get um, if there was a location and then what we get is the the body or the description for this um, appointment. We can see all of the information in there that's been added. And what we've got here is the customer info. So those fields that are the standard fields of name, email and phone number, they are then added in here. And then we've got the booking info, the service name, location and then the price and then any custom fields. So that's what it looks like within Outlook. So now that we understand a little bit more about what happens, um, it also, sorry, it also books the um, appointment as busy. If there is an appointment that is booked that is time off, then it's booked as away. So now we understand a little bit more about it. That's great. Um, we can go ahead and we can actually create a flow. So if I go into Power Automate, here we've got a flow that I've Put together. So first thing is the recurrence. I've got it to run every day at eight o'clock. So now if I look at get bookings, this is the um, the action to get a list of events. Now what we are doing is we are linking up to the calendar for the Microsoft bookings user. So we looked at that in one of the other videos and if I go into the admin center and I go to the user that was created, it's an unlicensed user, I've got an email address for it that I can log in with, and all I need to do is reset the password for that user. We haven't ever had a password that we've created, we can click on reset and we can give it a password that we now have. Then what we can do is we can log in and create a new connection and log in with that specific user, and then that gives us access to that bookings calendar, which is awesome, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to use a filter and this query is essentially going to say only show bookings that do not show as out of office. So that is where we have the um, 
way we looked at this where it sets it to busy but if it sets it to away that's because we've created um we've created uh like a, a time off entry for somebody so somebody's pto or or vacation time so right here day off if i click on that we can see that that was set to away and that's set by bookings when you create that um, time off. So we don't want those ones. And then what we're looking for is we're looking for any appointments where the start date and time. Now, this is how you need to set this start slash date time is greater than or equals to today's date at midnight and the start date and time is less than the um, uh, today's date with up to basically um, one minute to midnight. So anything that you've got between that time is essentially going to be for today. So that's how we are getting that. And this um, expression is basically just formatting the current date with um, this specific format of year, month and day. All right. So then what we need to do is we need to initialize some variables. So basically what this is doing is it is providing a, a place for us to then hold some kind of value later on through in our um, flow. We have to do these at, at the top before we get to, to any apply to each or anything like that. So that's why we set these at the top. So these are just basically empty strings to where what we're doing is we are saying, right, well, we know that we need to gather the consultant's name later. We need to gather the customer's name later on. We need to gather their email address, their phone number. And then this one is the only one that's going to be different. And instead of a string, this is going to be an array. And this is going to allow us, as we go through and cycle through all of the bookings that we found, it's going to put them into a table. It's going to append to this specific variable and put those in there so that we can then create a nice, pretty table later on. All right. So now what we're going to do is we are going to use the HTML to text action and what we're going to do is we're going to put in the body from the bookings that it's found and as soon as we put in the body so there we go we've got get bookings as soon as we put the body in it then creates this apply to each for you and it pops this value in here so that's what we're doing just search for this action put the body in there and this will um, encase it in this apply to each now what we're doing is we are going to use these variables that we've added up here and we're going to set the the value for these variables so the first one is the customer name now what we're doing here is we are basically taking information from the um, body of the or the description of the appointment and we're basically splitting out and we're finding a point in that description and what we're doing is we are looking for where the word email um, starts and before that we're looking for so we're, sorry we're basically looking for where the word name with a colon starts and then a space after it and then everything that comes after that up till we get to the word email we're going to extract that so if I then look at one of these again we can see here we've got name and colon and then we have a space and then we actually have the person's name then the next thing we have is the word email so we basically are saying take everything that's between those two things and that will give us the person's name so we're doing that again for the email and for that we are basically saying start from the word email colon then a space and go all the way up until we get to phone and then finally we're doing the same thing where we're saying start at phone number and then go all the way up until the booking info. So you're going to have to look at this and understand it. What I've done is given you the way in which you can get name, email and phone number. If you are doing anything different or you've uh, you notice that your information for some reason is containing more, then you just need to look at it and adjust the expression so that you're pulling the right stuff. All right. So we've got those three things, customer name, customer email and customer phone. Then what we're going to do is we're going to get the consultant's name in this flow. That's all I'm doing is I'm just looking for their name. I've got other things coming up where we're actually tying it into the Office 365 users connector. This one, I'm just getting their name in order to do that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to set the consultants variable and I'm going to um, 
basically now what this looks a bit strange but what this does is if i look for categories um if you look for categories in under the get bookings and you put categories into this value this is what will end up happening once you save it and you come back to it, it, it threw me a couple of times where I'm like, what have I done? But it, this will do that and it will put current item in there and it will put, put categories in there. So we are going to set that. We're going to essentially use the category that is created and we're going to pull that because that is the person's name. Then finally, within all of this, we are going to add and sorry, we're going to append to this variable, which is the array variable. And we need curly brackets. And then for each um, uh, header that we want to use, we are going to put in quotes. So I've got the consultant, customer name, customer email, customer phone, um, the service that they've uh, booked, and then the start time and the end time. So we can see here that I've pulled in all of these different variables that I've set. I've pulled in the subject as the service. And then what I'm doing is I am formatting the start time and formatting the end time that are for each of those. Um, and I'm formatting them in the uh, day in the month. And then I've got the, um, the time that it is. So I've set that and I'm creating that table. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to, because that I've set that up as an array, what I'm doing is I'm using the create an HTML table action step and I'm pulling from the HTML table variable. Because I've already set the columns, I'm just going to leave that as automatic. You could go ahead and do custom and then um, set them, but to me, I've already set that up. I don't need to manually put the columns in. Then what we're going to do is we are going to add some style to the HTML table. So I'll have a link below in the description to a blog post from a friend of mine, Ryan, Ryan McLean, who has um, basically walks through how to show you adding in this style. Essentially, we're putting in some CSS above the output from the HTML table just so it looks a little bit prettier. And then finally, the last thing that I'm doing is I'm sending an email to myself that says, here are the bookings for today. And then I'm using the output from the add style to HTML table step. So there's a step right before that. So that is going to run every single day. Like I said, it is going to extract the category to get the consultant's name. It's going to extract the name of the person, the email from the person, and the phone number all from that customer information section. So what's going to happen is then when we get that email, we're going to get something that looks a little bit like this. So here we can see there's the consultant, customer name, customer email, customer phone number, the service they've booked, the start time and the end time. So now I'm getting that as a manager or I could create this for myself and see everything that's going on for today. So I know exactly what bookings and what appointments we have. Yes, I could use the mobile app, but this could be used to be sent to somebody that doesn't have access to bookings. Um, it could be used and then printed out and put up in a staff room on, on the notice board, in the kitchen, wherever it might be, where everyone's going to see it. Um, so that gives you a way to get access to the information that Microsoft Bookings is creating and adding into Outlook for you. So I hope that helps. This video was used as an explanation. There is a blog post, which is also linked in the description to where it is every single step of the flow in screenshots and explanations. So hope you enjoy it and let me know what you think. Hi, I'm Megan Walker. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video and that you learned something from it. If you don't want to miss out on any other content, you can go ahead and click on my face below to subscribe. And if you want to watch the next video, you can do that by clicking over here and go ahead and get started. Thanks again.